everybody, this is Birch. And I, I just want to come clean on one of the things that just annoys me to no end in a comic. And it can take a comic that I, uh, you know, by a writer I like or a, or a team or a character or concept, whatever else, and can almost put it in the despise or hate pile for me. And that's when the art shifts around inside the comic, when you actually have multiple artists within a comic. Now, there's been some cases where this can work out, um, and I think that there's, there's you know, differences in all this. Um, I think that, uh, you know, Green Lantern uh, had some multiple artists for the first two issues. Um, it was annoying. Honestly, that was the, the big detraction from, you know, the issue for me. Uh, it just, it, it, it eats me up. I, I, it, but it, but that was miles better than comics where the, the art style varies wildly. Um, Green Lantern's case, uh, that you could definitely tell there's, there was two different artists. There's no doubt about it, different styles, but the colorist, I think did some, maybe some super work to kind of help keep things consistent. And it, it, it was at least close and, uh, the story writing and how the pages were divided up, uh, had it be, you know, told in kind of different flashbacks or different scenes. So at least there was some, some break up there and that was, uh, that was better. Uh, still, I'd, I'd rather not have it, but it, it, kind of dawns on me. I mean, everybody's got their things that really irk them uh, about comics. And for me, I, I, I think probably the, the fastest way to, for me to hate a comic is if you shuffle the art around. And uh, there, we just got the final uh, Jonathan Hickman issue of X-Men uh, before uh, Gary Duggan takes over. And in this, this issue, which the Hellfire Gala issue, which already, I mean, I'm not a fan of that storyline, so I'm, I'm already, you know, not loving kind of that whole pitch. Um, and, but there are some good scenes in there. There's some stuff that Hickman's doing that's, you know, paying off a few things. Kind of the, the conversation between Xavier and Magneto and Namor is, uh, it's, it's drawn out, but it's a good conversation. It reminds me a lot of, of when Hickman was writing Namor for um, New Avengers, and so there's a nice, you know, nod to that. Uh, but this comic uh, has multiple artists in it, and the art, artists are, are nowhere remotely the same. Uh, Nick Dragota, who's an artist I like very, very much, have gotten commissions from him and, and think he's a great guy. Um, but his art style is up there against uh, you know others that are just complete, like, just complete tonal shift of everything. And it jerks me out of the comic like nothing else can. Uh, I, I haven't even been a, fa a fan of, uh, I haven't been a fan of this forever. I remember, uh, the, there was a X-Men heroes for hunger, uh, issue a long time ago where they had different writers and different artists, uh, kind of all working on this book. And th this book, the entire purpose was that a, a bunch of people were coming together, kind of like a, uh, you know, charity of the stars or kind of one of those, you know, you know, telethons to, to kind of raise money. And so even the premise was, was kind of built around that. And I, it still irritated me, even though, uh, you know, a lot of my very favorite artists, not just then, but now contributed to that book. Uh, but it was, st it's still very, very irritating. Um, I, I'm curious, I, you know, where all this is coming from. Um, uh, I'm trying to really do a better job of defining out the things that I don't like about comics or the things I do like kind of either way, what are the things I look for or always takes me out of the book? And I'm doing this for my own reasons, not for this channel, but, uh, you know, one, I think it's always good to kind of check in on yourself, especially if you're a retailer, you're trying to recommend or, or sell comics to others. If you're a reviewer, you should know your own biases. And I think you should be upfront with them. If uh, you're a reviewer for a comic site, I think you should lay out the groundwork of what's going on uh, in your mind with uh, and, and what's going on with the setting. If you got a comic comp to you, you should say that. People should know that, you know, hey, you, you, this wasn't just you picking up a comic off the stand, paying for it, and giving your feedback on it. You were comped it. So, you know, that there's there's not, not a conflict of interest, but there's some things going into it. I, I think that kind of honesty is really important. And I think that as comics uh, journalism, comics news tries to improve a little bit, um, and we get more people in this, I think that I, I think the reviewer should just come out and say things like, you know, I don't like the X-Men. I'm here reviewing this X-Men comic. And so you get to see this review through that lens. I think it it allows you to, you know, kind of listen and or, or read the review and, and you know, 
compare your biases against the reviewer's bias. I think this is helpful. Uh, so, I, I mean, for me, like I said, changing the artist in the book will take a reasonable title and just almost kill it for me. I, it just, it really hurts. And, and it is the, you know, I'm wanting to be immersed in this story. And when the art shifts around and characters start appearing differently, looking differently at like, you know, in this panel, uh, Magneto looks like he suddenly put on like 40 pounds or 50 pounds based on how the artist is drawing them. It's, it's just very, yeah, anyway, it, it breaks the illusion of what I think the writer is trying to convey. Um, I've been I've been negative in general. I, I mean, Marvel in particular has really kind of embraced this idea of the multiple artists on an event. And uh, in recent years, actually, in fairness, um, Empire was more consistent. Uh, King and Black was completely consistent in what it did. And that was a huge plus. I think, uh, you know, having one writer, one artist is a good thing. Um, I remember AVX, you had, uh, again, radically different artists. You, I think Oliver Kopil did some, and then you got uh, John Romita Jr. And uh, I think uh, Hubert uh, came on and did some. Uh, you, you just had wildly shifting artists. And then on top of that, you've got... Uh, you know, you've got Brian Michael Bendis, you have Jason Aaron, I think you had Matt Fraction in there. I mean, you just had all over the place uh, writing styles, and it doesn't harmonize. It doesn't come together. I think it, it's wonderful, and every now and then we have seen some collaborations where you get multiple writers, or, or you know, I think Brubaker and Fraction, uh, who did the uh, the Iron Fist series, I think that, that seemed to go well, it flowed well together. I think it's easier on the writer side if you have a collaboration and, and you do see more of that. But on the artist side, it's uh, it's just it's extremely rough. And and part of the problem is, I think, knowing kind of the background that very rarely is it because they're trying to do a, a jam issue or some kind of celebration of different styles. More often than not, it's because there was a time crunch or the schedule got away from someone. We had to bring in somebody else. And it's, it's because of a lack of planning. And, you know, in a world where the comics are shipping extremely randomly, I mean, X-Men number 20 was, was incredibly delayed. Um, so not only is it delayed, but also we've got multiple artists trying to do this issue. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's a problem. Um, so, to, so that's, that, again, this is one of the things that, that irks me and, and, um, that's my reasoning it, right now, as we, you know, I've talked about in other videos, we're living in this time where, uh, if you criticize something, um, you are, you know, it, people are going to aggressively want to fight you over it. Um, I'm watching kind of the dialogue and this is probably the only time I'm really going to talk about it. I'll read the issue and if there's something to talk about, I'll do it. But this Amelia Clark uh, image comic that's coming out next month, uh, where I, I think it's a, it's a female superhero who, who, uh, her emotions kind of dictate her powers, her powers, uh, shift around a bit based on her emotions. And then she has like armpit hair that she can swing around with or something. I, again, I'm, I, I'm a little hesitant to describe what this is based on a solicitation and, and just a few vague kind of pages that have been put up. Uh, but her powers get stronger during her period, uh, things like that. And so, as you can imagine, um, with that information, a lot of people are going to town on this book uh, with how ridiculous it sounds. Because, look, no matter who you are, no matter how much you love Amelia Clark, and the, the crazy part is the, the, the Amelia Clark stands on Twitter are, are some of the, I mean, they are putting the Poison Ivy stands to shame of just uh, of being extremely militant. Like anybody who's like I saw a post from um, a woman who, who has a book of her own, and she's like, I'm, I'm not really going to talk about this thing. I wish people would stop talking about it. And she said very, you know, nothing. And uh, the, the Amelia Clark fans came in and was like, you know, screw you, you're a monster. I hope you die. I mean, just like all, all over the place. Toxic fandom, right? I've certainly gotten that with some of the yeah, X-Men uh, groups when I uh, said I thought it was, you know, I, I've, said I don't like a storyline. I've got people who just come in all, you know, insane over stuff. So it's, it's hard when you criticize something. Um, it's, it's not, it's people are, are not willing to just say it's a, you know, that, that's your opinion. They want to make it into a fight. So the antidote to that, I think has to be, uh, look, these are the reasons I dislike something. 
you can choose to reject my reasons, but I am giving you reasons. And the reasons in my case, uh, like I said, changing the art style, I hate it personally. Others may like it. And so that's part of what I'm curious. I mean, does this bother you as much as it bothers me? I, I spent some time thinking last night. I, I don't know if there's a faster, more immediate way for me to be irritated at a comic than that. I, that's, that's probably my biggest kind of auto dislike is if the art jumps around in the comic. Um, outside of that, I mean, and everybody has their own thing. So what are yours? What are your, I'm not talking about like, like, uh, Oh, this comic has social topics in it. I mean, things that are more tangible than that. I mean, what are the things that if you see it, you're just, you know, it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be, you're most likely going to dislike this comic. What are those things for you? I'd love to know about it. So in the comments below, uh, let me know your thoughts, like, and subscribe. And thanks for listening.